podcasts brought to you by Real Terrio Radio. Oh, it was good true. My name is DeFatula. And I'm about to lose control with a bloody idiot. And I can't see that the bloody idiots are all around me. And I cannot help it. Oh no, here we go again. My name is DeFatula. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to my podcast. My name is Dick Bachelor, and you may have remembered we are about to take a cruise here in Romania in my hotel room where it's the year 2019. And it's been an exciting flight from the UK to here uh, from the shop. Jay Stone's bloody idiot has been sent back to India in a crate. My dear husband Gupta took care of it personally when he came back from his holiday, from visiting his mother. And I've got something to funny to tell you. Jay Stone's bloody idiot, when he was in India, is responsible for walking my... Gupta's mother's mother's dog Who but And They were stopped by the police Because they were walking side by side With each other This big huge Indian chap Gets out of the car And he turns around And he's so confused Because where he comes from The dog walks in front Of the owner And the owner has it on a lead But the dog was walking behind uh, J. Stone's bloody idiot number 32 and uh, that, that's basically just say the policeman was that confused he picked up his walkie talkies and he went 791 Gupta over and the sergeant replied and he, he told him his predicament and he said to the sergeant sergeant I don't know which one's walking who the dog or the Zubian. So he put them all in the van and took them off to the police station. When they arrived, when they arrived at the police station, the sergeant was waiting outside with the duty inspector. They weren't amused because they had five burly security policemen with rifles and truncheons and visors waiting. They were afraid, I think, just in case the dog started barking. However, it wasn't for the dog. The dog was well behaved. J. Stone's bloody idiot number 32 at this bit was quite distressed. After a seven hour ride in the back of a lolly with three wheels and tied to a jeep with a tank uh, runner over it, it was very unbumpy for J. Stone's bloody idiot. He went over every pothole. And let me tell you about pothole's. I live in a place I used to cross Fonzie. And it's full of pothole's. Jay Stone's bloody idiot's been out digging, see? Then we were... So when we got there, I was walked... I was walked in. I was strip searched. I was violated. I can't believe it, Jay Stone's bloody idiot said. He was telling us all about his strip searches and violations. He was demanding a lawyer. In the end, the inspector and the sergeant were still confused on what the, the big burly Indian policeman was saying. So they asked Jay Stone's bloody idiot and the dog to reenact on how they were doing it and what they were doing. So... J. Stone's bloody idiot was walking side by side with a dog. The policeman turns around to the sergeant and says, Sergeant, who is walking? Who? I, I, I can't find the one who poopied on the floor. So, the inspector turns around and says, Find the one by there, standing six feet tall, uh, with a lead around his neck and a collar. He looked 
that's the more sensible one than that bloody idiot standing there. And when you act it, get them in front of a judge. So, I've been to Singapore. And Jay Stone's bloody idiot nearly spots that didn't he? You know, Blooming has finally arrived. He's loving living with my other son, Victor Manuel. You know, Victor Manuel Bachelor. The only problem is, we've got too many children living here, so we may have to move. But, right now, I'm very much interested in meeting my old friend, Captain Phyllis Bartholomew Ross. I haven't seen him for some time. He thinks he's going to have a job working at Bachelor Brothers PLC Limited. But I've got some bad news for him. We're going to fire him! So, we are going on the ship, the SS Leroy O'Leary. As you remember, my uncle's made my other uncle, Uncle Media, Mr. Bachelor, changed his name to Leroy O'Leary because he ran a bunch of £25 million on a wedding and having a family that he didn't tell anyone about. My uncle said this was the last straw. We can't have secrets between families. And as my uncle, old Mr. Bachelor, said, he does sort all anyway. My uncle's old Mr. Bachelor and uncle young Mr. Bachelor are very, very adamant about secrets. They need to know everything. That's why when they were training me up to look after the company, they sent me to a training school to be a spy. So I always know what everything is going on. And this is why I know that Captain Philos Bartholomew is having a raunchy affair with, with Noel Moffat, who, if you remember from the first, the second series, had an affair and a sex operation, but also had an affair with Jay Stone's bloody idiot. Jay Stone's bloody idiot was last seen curdling in a fetal position because he had witnessed his brother, Marcus Stone's, actually uh he in free from dinko with her in a corner under a table i know shocking it went out live on the tv and if you remember jay stone's bloody idiot number 32 also owes us a couple of million pound forty-five thousand pounds just for an helicopter because he was going to jump off the seven bloody bridge of all things do you know, someone should have told him if you're going to jump off something, don't make it a bridge to the helicopter can land them. So, Captain Phyllis Bartholomew Ross is uh, expecting me. But before I, I go uh, to, to the port, I had to stop off at a hotel. But I needed to get directions to the hotel, so I asked the taxi driver to pull over because I saw somewhere that resembled the cinema. I went in, and it was painted all black. And there was a little man, like you have, in the old-fashioned cinema that takes you tickets, and you give him the money, and then you go through, and you sit down. And there's normally a little usherette that brings you, um, your uh, ice creams. You're in the intermission. For the intermission and I, I paid the five euro twenty and I went in and I, I have never seen such a sight in my own life I tell you my dear husband Gupta would have been shocked to see me in a place like this with these people all undressed so, at this little bar, I sat down and I might as well stay and watch the film. I didn't catch what it was on the front. So, it'd be a big surprise to me. I have to say, the screen is full of men. But my Gupta would be so surprised.
things. So, this little man in tight leather jacket chaps came up to me and he was wearing a little leather hat with Captain Stripes on them. It turned out he was Captain Feroz Bartholomew Loss himself. I didn't know what to wear if this was a fancy dress thing. So I was a bit shocked I've never seen something like this in my life. My Uncle Leroy O'Leary's wife, the chipmunk, would be surprised by what I'm seeing here. Especially with her moderate liberal upbringing in Australia. So I said to him, Why are you here? And do you know it's against the rules for you to be off the ship in a foreign institutional port? I'm going to dock your wages five months. And by the time I'm finished with you, I'm going to make your life a living hell. I can't believe what's going on. I, I was so shocked and traumatised when the film started and they would like go bang all over the place. One tried to touch me up and that Captain Panthelos Bartholomew if my husband Gupta was here, he would be punching people with my handbag. And that's if he don't send Sheila in. So, I think Captain Panthelos Bartholomew needs... A bit of management retraining. We've had many reports about his frequent behaviour. So, as it was dark, I thought I saw my copter, but I know it's not him. He's currently in the head office, running a company for me. But, I'm going to call someone in a department store, one of my favourite members of staff, Gladys Mildred Jones, Abergavenny, Abadair, Pontefried, Pontefract, Abertower, Cardiff Canalol, Slocum, Hughes, Williams. And if you remember, she's the head of the ladies' counter. She's worked for my uncles for the neon 51 years. She used to be in charge of the cruising side of the business. And she wants to go back to sea because her husband, Wilberforce, but Wilberforce, Mildred Jones, Abergavenny, Abadair, Pontefree, Pontefract, Abertower, Cardiff, Canalon, Slocum, Hughes, Williams. Oi ve! That must be a mouthful to see when you've had a drink. I'm glad this is going to be our new cruise ship director. And to have special administrative responsibility, Captain Bartholomew Ross, personally. And she's going to inform me all about his comings and goings. And I tell you one thing, I'm going on. And I can't find this place to run my off to have a thing. I want to go home and see my son, Francis, as Francis Bachelor. They've got a big, big problem with my other son, Lomi. And I tell you, I've also still got a high side off the Molly from her uh, other father, G Stone's Blood Idiot number 31, who has been trying to get to see his daughter. But I don't believe in this because G Stone's Blood Idiot number 31 is an abysmal person. Now, we have a vacancy for the head of ladies' bar. And I'm thinking of making that Teresa Summers giving her a go in a new position. In trade. But then thinking about it, she wasn't really good running the canteen. So would I actually trust her in selling the profits? So I made a phone call and Mrs. Williams to her friends is going to come out on the next flight on a private jet and then I'm going to take the plane back to the UK, pick up my copter and we're going back to the Indian Ocean 
to a private island because it's almost time for me to cite a general election to be elected the country's president. So I to be in charge. But before that, I've got to go to a cruise ship to give Captain Philip Bartholomew Ross a bit of my mind. So I, I went back to the port or the window and I asked the guy, what kind of place is this? He told me his eruption reflection place is for homosexual. I was surprised. So, after eating a man with my umbrella and demanding a full refund after two hours, I left unsatisfactory in the back of a taxi and I went back to the ship. As I got the captain after fill up the following Ross, I just arrived back. And this time he was probably dressed. He knew I was coming. But I told him I'm not staying, I've been recalled home. He said he's leaving tomorrow, I said I know. When my uncle's old Mr. Bachelor and young Mr. Bachelor were on the phone, they told me that there's a new cruise director coming in my place. And that her name is Gladys Mildred. Up at Cavendi. Up there. Up at Tower. Ponte Preed. Cardiff Canal Hall, Pontefract, Slocum Muses, I think. I have never met her, but she's a lovely woman, so my uncle says. Used to be in the cruise industry. And very good friends with Stereo Sachinono, who used to own Orange Ship. So. You better be on your best behaviour. Goodbye, Phyllis. I will see you soon. So I got off the ship and I got back in the taxi and I said, take me to the Grand Plaza Hotel, please. I need to go and pack my bags before I go home. The taxi driver resembled a, someone I knew from a past life. I must remember him from somewhere, but I, I, I just can't place it. But anyways, I need to also stop off an Alan when I get back to London and Marks and Sparks's. Because I can't go without the Percy Pig. Even though I got you stored bloody at the end of my life. But me and my families are all moving to our little island, to our newest city called Swansea's. By the sea. So I look forward to seeing you soon, loves. I see you soon, and I tell you all about Jay Stone's bloody. Oh, I forgot to tell you, didn't I? About the time. About Jay Stone's bloody idiot walking the dog. So. Jay Stone's bloody idiot was walking the dog. You know, with, with the policeman doing the reconstruction. And the policeman. The sergeant turned to the inspector and said, Sir, I, I still don't understand what the problem is. This person, pointing to the dog, is more responsible than this dog, pointing to the person. I think we should let them off with a warning. The inspector agreed, and even the superintendent, and the magistrate too. J. Stone's bloody idiot was sent to a canine rescue centre. It cost me 45 rubles to get it out again. Bye bye, people! And that's it for this week's episode. Add us to your podcatcher or on iTunes now so that you can make sure you never miss out on another second of our wonderful podcast. We would hate for you to miss out. Have a great week, everyone.